November 11, 1918, in the forest of Compiègne, a truce was concluded, which ended the First World War. On the same day, Marshal of Poland Joseph Pilsudski became the head of state and forms the first democratic government. After 123 years of occupation by Prussia, the Austro-Hungarian and Russian empires, Poland gained independence. However, the long-awaited freedom was under threat. Neighboring countries were experiencing incredible internal upheavals, so it was impossible to build diplomatic relations with them. On the other side of the western border, the Weimar Republic was formed, which in a few years would turn into Nazi Germany. On the east side was the newly formed Soviet Union, which dreamed of spreading communism throughout Europe. From the very first days of its existence, independent Poland found itself between two fires. And in addition to restoring the country, the government needed to immediately ensure its security. For this, a department is created, which was supposed to study ciphers and codes with the aim of their subsequent breaking. The organization was named the Cipher Section and became the forerunner of the famous Bureau of Ciphers which later played a key role in the hacking of Enigma. We're going to tell you a bit more about it and what the hacking actions of the Polish mathematician led to in the new issue of Histography. The Polish military appreciated the importance of code breakers even during the Soviet-Polish War of 1919 through 1921, when the encryption section cracked over 100 codes. The intelligence service gained access to all operational messages transmitted by units in the Soviet troops and the information obtained became a decisive factor in victory. In the interwar period, the cipher section was tasked with finding out the intentions of the two belligerent neighbors. At the beginning of 1928, the German army began to actively use a new encryption method, which the general headquarters of the Polish armed forces became interested in. Over the next four years, cryptologists did not make any progress in decrypting messages. And in 1932, it became obvious that the department's resources were not enough to work with the German encryption system. The general staff organized a classified German language course on cracking the code for students and researchers in order to find talents in the field of cryptography. In the classroom, students were given real, undeciphered messages, while it was argued that the teacher actually knew their meaning. Among the students stood out Marian Rajewski from the University of Poznan, who studied in Gottingen, Germany, and spoke flawless German. Also, the military was interested in Heinrich Zygalski and Jerry Rozicki, mathematicians who brilliantly completed the final task of the course. They were recruited into the cryptographic staff, where they immediately got involved in the work on the Enigma hack. The Enigma is a portable encryption machine invented in Germany in the early 1920s. At first, it was used for commercial purposes, but in 1925, the German army became interested in the device, for which special models were created. Enigma featured a revolutionary encryption method. During World War I, the Germans used the ADF-GVX cipher, based on the substitution and rearrangement of letters. It was hacked back in 1918, and the general staff needed a new solution. Enigma used a multi-alphabetic substitution cipher driven by a mechanism. The device looks like this. The heart of Enigma is the rotors. Each rotor was an ebony disc with 26 contacts on each side. Contacts were responsible for the letters of the Latin alphabet and were connected in a random way. It was here that the signal received the first layer of encryption. For example, the contact responsible for the letter C was connected to the contact with the letter Y on the other side. Over time, the Germans modified the machine since 1913, the device had used eight rotors at once, increasing the number of combinations by a factor of millions. Each rotor was walking. After typing each symbol, it changed its position. So the message was transformed many times before it was sent. In addition, Enigma had a Steckerbrett patch panel. It made encryption an order of magnitude more difficult, changing the connection between the keys even before the rotor started working. On the front panel, there are paired holes responsible for letters. The cables connected them in pairs. For example, the operator pressed the C key. The signal was sent to the M, and only then was transferred to the rotors. Usually, six cables were included with each copy of Enigma. 
the patch panel, created a code that was almost impossible to crack, since the operator himself could decide which jacks to insert wires into and how many. To properly encrypt and decrypt the message, the sender and recipient devices had to have identical settings, the choice of rotors, their initial positions, and the connection of cables on the patch panel. These settings were approved in advance and entered into special cipher books. In addition, the Germans encoded names and frequently used words in different ways, changed combinations of symbols, and also broadcast garbage, a meaningless set of symbols that should only confuse the enemy. The French and British were so convinced of the impossibility of hacking the Enigma that they developed a plan to steal one of the machines and introduce a spy into the German headquarters who was supposed to transmit information about changing settings. The plan was doomed to failure in advance. In case of loss, the Germans would immediately redo the device, and counterintelligence carefully screened out candidates of poor operators. In late 1932, a German officer, Hans Thilo Schmidt, working in the communications corps, gained access to outdated code tables, which include descriptions of Enigma settings at different times. He contacted French intelligence officers and handed over classified information to them for a huge reward. Since the documents did not say exactly how to use the device, cryptographers in Paris considered the data to be outdated and impractical, and their British counterparts were of the same opinion. Then the papers got to the Polish Bureau of Ciphers. Marian Rieski, who managed to study the commercial version of Enigma, guessed that the solution was close. He compared the received documents with the intercepted ciphers and calculated the formulas by which the rotor connections were established in the devices of the German army. Having tuned the rotors, the Polish ciphers entered a coded message and received a chaotic set of letters. After all, the calculations were completely correct. He realized that the error was in the keyboard. In his car, the keys were connected to an input cylinder in a standard German layout, QWERTZ, as on a typewriter. And in the military version of Enigma, the keyboard was different. Rajewski, knowing the Germans' love of order, suggested that the keys are connected in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, E. He entered the message again and received the decrypted text. But even with the hacked code, it was far from victory. The Nazis foresaw this possibility, so they changed the settings of the rotors and the patch panel every day. To transmit an encrypted message, the operator first sent a key consisting of encrypted characters visible only in the initial position of the rotors. To avoid the error, the key message was sent twice. The Poles noticed a weak link in this procedure. Key messages throughout the day were the same throughout the network and many operators chose the most obvious options, such as QQQ or ABC. By analyzing the intercepted encryptions, Rajewski was able to reduce the number of possible settings from 10 trillion to 105,456 options and began cataloging them. He assembled a special machine, a cyclometer, for speedy enumeration of combinations. The process of its creation took about a year but then Rajewski received the decrypted daily keys in just 15 minutes. Thanks to the cyclometer, the Poles were able to read almost all German messages. However, at the end of 1937, the Germans realized the disadvantages of Enigma encryption and significantly complicated the encryption process. They added rotors and increased the number of connections in the panel to 10. All Rajewski's work turned out to be useless. In a moment of despair, his colleague, Heinrich Zygalski, proposed a new solution. He created specially perforated sheets of paper through which it was possible to trace the repeated pairs of characters in the key message. In the strictest secrecy, the department staff manually created each sheet, which took a lot of time. The international situation was heating up. The Polish government realized that they needed to create a machine capable of quickly decrypting messages. In the fall of 1938, Rajewski designed a cryptological bomb. The device embodied Zygalski's work and tracked repeating characters and messages. In the process of decryption, the apparatus methodically ticked, reminding its creators of a bomb. Several such devices were created, each of which combined the mechanisms of six enigmas. Bombs made it possible to receive decryption in just a couple of hours. But the joy was short-lived. In December, the Germans once again modified the data encryption process. 
In April 1939, Hitler breaks the non-aggression pact. Realizing that war is inevitable and the department's resources are no longer enough, the Polish government decided to share its knowledge with the French and British. They have previously transmitted decrypted messages to the Allies, but did not share developments for fear of espionage. On July 26, military experts from the three countries met on the outskirts of Warsaw. The Poles proudly announced that they had broken the code of the Germans and promised in the near future to transfer copies of military samples of Enigma to show all methods of decryption and solutions in case of future code modifications. On September 1st, the German army invaded Polish territory. Four days later, the entire team of the Bureau of Ciphers was ordered to flee the country, having destroyed all evidence of work on Enigma before that. They were evacuated to Romania, then to Yugoslavia, and then Italy. And through Italy, they arrived in France, where they joined the PC Bruno Reconnaissance Group, working exclusively with German code. The Germans managed to catch some members of the Bureau, but despite the inhuman treatment of the Gestapo and getting into concentration camps, they did not reveal the secrets of the Enigma break-in. By the end of October, mathematicians managed to create an improved copy of the bomb. They deciphered every fifth message and provided invaluable assistance to the military. They prevented air raids on London and regularly transmitted reports of military operations in Europe. Cryptologists intercepted Hitler's orders even before the German generals received them. In July 1940, when France surrendered, the staff fled again. Rajewski and Zygalski arrived in Algeria, but then returned to France and secretly continued their work. In the summer of 1942, the scientists were threatened with arrest. After the Nazis miraculously did not catch them, mixing up the buildings, the mathematicians decided to evacuate to England. They managed to get to the border with Spain and surrender to the police. After three months in prison, the scientists were released and taken to England. Finally, they got their freedom, but they were not allowed to work with Enigma. The Allies were afraid that Rajewski and Zygalski could be recruited by the Nazis. The ideas developed by the Poles served as the basis for further work on the Enigma hack. British scientists, led by Alan Turing, created an improved version of the bomb and by the beginning of 1945, deciphered almost every German message. U.S. President Eisenhower noted that the hacking of the Enigma was a decisive factor in the victory over Hitler, and many historians agreed that this event brought the victory closer by two years and saved millions of lives. The role of Rajewski and Zygalski in decoding Enigma became known only in 1973. The scientists were awarded many Polish and British orders, and a monument was erected in the honor of their merits near the University of Poznan. What do you think? What would have been the outcome of the war had the Poles not figured out the Enigma code? Share your opinion in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, share the video with your friends, and subscribe.